In this video, you will learn about our work with paper-based microfluidics for diagnostics. So, what are paper-based microfluidics? Fields of application are, for example, immunoassays, environmental monitoring, and food safety. PBM are most commonly known from pregnancy tests and diabetes blood tests. A user-friendly application, cost-effective production, and the easy disposable technology are big advantages of PBM. In this project, a device with three detection zones and one big sample zone in the middle were created. They each are separated by three channels. The sample is placed on the sample zone and then will migrate to the detection zone due to capillary forces. The aim was to create a PBM which is able to detect both nitrate and antibiotics which may be contained in meat. The technique used for creating the device is called hot embossing. A nitrocellulose filter paper soaked in wax is placed on another filter paper. Then a heated metal template is placed directly on this construct. After applying a certain weight, it rests for a given period. As a result, the molten wax is pressed into the areas of the filter paper specified by the template and creates hydrophobic barriers and hydrophilic areas. After turning the device to the other side, the detection zones can be loaded with detection reagents. To prepare the wax soaked filter paper, beeswax is molten. In order to visualize the wax, a given amount of a red wax crayon is added and then mixed gently. Now the filter paper is put into the wax for 10 seconds and afterwards is air dried. In order to evaluate the parameters for the hot embossing, different weights, stamping times and temperatures of the template are tested. In terms of weight, 0.84 kg, 1.8 kg and 2.8 kg were examined. Based on each weight, the temperature was varied. Therefore, stamp temperatures corresponding to the melting point of beeswax, 65 degrees Celsius, and above, 75 degrees Celsius, were chosen. In addition, the impact of the stamping time was determined. For this purpose, 3, 10 and 30 seconds were selected. Only three treatments are worth considering for further course. Treatment 1 with 1.8 kg and 30 seconds, treatment 2 with 1.8 kg and 3 seconds, and treatment 3 with 2.8 kg and 30 seconds. The following graphs show that treatment 1, here in purple, so far is the most promising, because it deviates the least from the target value. But to test the reproducibility of each condition, five further applications were produced and measured in each case. Treatment 2 with 1.8 kg and 3 seconds produced significantly worse results regarding to the consistency. The data analysis of the other two treatments showed similar results, although treatment 1, here in blue, showed a lower standard deviation and therefore a higher reproducibility. As mentioned before, both nitrate and antibiotics were detected on the PVM. Nitrate was detected by the Lungus reaction. Lungus A, which contains sulfonylic acid, and Lungus B, which contains alpha naphthylamine, are added to the detection. For the preparation of a PBM for the detection of antibiotics, in this case a streptomycin-penicillin mixture, first copper-2-sulfate pentahydrate 
in water is added to the detection zone. And then a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution is added as well, resulting in a light blue transition metal hydroxide. After the antibiotics mixture is added, the color changes to green after an extended period of time. Finally, the detection of both substances was combined on one device.